welcome to everybody. And uh, I would like to remind you that this uh, uh, webinar is uh, recorded uh, because we will uh, um, publish it for those people that are not able to join today. Uh, you are free to ask questions uh, by in the chat, or if you want uh, uh, at the question answer session, you can also uh, open your mic. I think and you can interview. But remember that they are recorded. Uh, so welcome again. My name is Massimo Zancanaro. I'm the coordinator of the master, which is our laura magistrale for the Italian one, uh, on human computer interaction, uh, which is a, a, a master which is uh, offered by two departments of the University of Trento, the Department of Psychology and Cognitive Science, and the Department uh, of Information Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, today, I will briefly introduce the, uh, the courses to, to, to the program, and then there will be uh, a couple of former students, uh, Victor Corral and uh, Eleonora Manzolini, that they will tell us something about their career after they graduated. And uh, at the end, uh, Michele Dell'Otto, which is the head of the uh, service office, uh, he will, present, uh, so he will um, present some information about uh, the administrative bureaucracy, but also uh, the, the part that I think that is most relevant, the, the services of the University of Trento and the internationalization offer that uh, our university um, provides. Uh, so let me briefly introduce uh, uh, the course. Um, the, first of all, what is human-computer interaction? If you are here, I think that uh, uh, more or less you know, uh, but uh, uh, human-computer interaction is a branch of computer science. So basically, it is part of computer science. But since its beginning, in the, probably in the 70s, uh, it's uh, understood as a very interdisciplinary field. Uh, in, uh, overall, human-computer interaction is everything that has to do with the design, evaluation, and implementation of digital technologies for human use. Uh, but actually, this course is based uh, on in the Department of Cognitive Science. Of course, we are collaborating. This is a truly interdisciplinary, uh, interdepartmental course, but it's based on uh, uh, the Department of Psychology and Cognitive Science. Uh, what is cognitive science? Again, it's, a, it's a set, an interdisciplinary field that has to do mainly with the st study of the mind and intelligence in an academic sense. But it, it's, a, it's a field of study that embraces philosophy, psychology, artificial intelligence, neuroscience, linguistic, and anthropology. And so why we decided to offer a, a, a degree of programming, human-computer interaction, in a, in a department whose research is mainly on cognitive science? Uh, because uh, 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 when, we, when you design technology, actually, you have three different levels. There is a how the, uh, level in which uh, you ask yourself which action should the user perform. And in this case, uh, you have to do with the, the modalities. You know, on a technical, you are designed to, to implement modalities. But from the point of view of the user, you have to understand uh, how the perception works, how the motor system, what are the limitations of the human motor system, and so on. And, and so this is, belongs to cognitive science and cognitive psychology. And then there is the what. What can users do with this problem? And uh, this is from technological point of view, you need to design functionalities. But actually, you also have to understand or to have an awareness of how people reason uh, how planning is done by human mind, the short and long term memories, and so on. All these belong to cognitive science uh, in a true sense. And then there is the why, which are the user needs, the user goals, the, 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 the belief of the users. And there is nothing on this point of view on technology. The, the, there's no technology counterpart in this. But actually, you have to, in order to design properly, you have to take into account the needs, the desire, the first, the emotions. And again, all of this is uh, part of uh, a cognitive science. So actually, cognitive science offers, uh, together with the world of computer science and engineers, but they both offer different uh, complementary point of view. And cognitive science allows you to have a, 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 a full 
a rich vocabulary of concepts and methods and techniques that hopefully will make you a better designer. Uh, with our uh, master, we aim at training a new generation of professionals, but also researchers that are able to understand the complexity of human cognition, uh, the human behavior and emotion, and then be able to use this knowledge and embedding in the designing of new computer artifacts and new technology. A new technology does not mean necessarily something that does not exist today. It could also be like that but also proper use and a proper approach to technology that is already present. How is structured the, the, our program? Uh, from this year, uh, we decided to, uh, to have to start the course, uh, to the, the program with two bridge courses uh, that are both compulsory uh, because uh, we have uh, uh, more or less half of our people of our students coming from computer science and we say technology uh, background, and another half with the psychology from both psychology background, and also uh, historically a few people from uh, um, philosophy and design. And so we decided to uh, offer these bridge courses in order to uh, provide some introduction to both the disciplines. So you should, um, sorry, I, I made a mistake. They're both elective, they're not both compulsory, because you have to choose one of the two. So if you come from a technical background, in your bachelor, you have to choose HCI and psychology and neuroscience. If you come from um, um, psychology or other disciplines, you have to choose HCI and computer science. So you have to choose the one in which you are uh, weaker let's say in your background. And this will allow to have a, a sort of a common knowledge, a common understanding uh, as a starting point. And then we have some core HCI uh, courses, and these are cognitive economics and participatory design that technically are a single course, but actually there are two independent models, uh, prototyping of interactive system, and uh, design epistemology and ethics. These are the compulsory and are the, the, the core of HCI. And then we have an elective, the visual design that you can choose or not choose depending on your, or how you combine your elective courses. Then there are two uh, compulsory courses on methodology. You have to do both qualitative and quantitative methodology. And uh, most of the people have a strong preference for one or the other, but actually it's very important in our disciplines to know the, 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 the both, the, the gist of both. So we ask you to do both. And then we have three areas, let's say. And by combining the, um, the elective of these three areas, you can have a, a number of tracks, a number of specialization, of informal specialization. The first area uh, is a social interaction. Uh, and you have a course uh, named exactly social interaction in which you will be introduced to the basic of uh, a social psychology, but with a, a perspective on design. And then you can choose other two courses to fully complement this area, which is design for social inclusion, uh, in which you have a specific perspective on this aspect of social inclusion or educational technologies, course, uh, with another specific topic, uh, perspective. And then we have an area in which we have a neuroergonomics, which is very important and will become very important, and brain computer interaction. Uh, the course on neuroeconomics, uh, uh, which are the basis of neuroeconomics, visual brain and design, uh, is a compulsory course. And then uh, you can uh, deepen your understanding or knowledge of, um, of uh, a brain computer interaction with a specific course that you can choose as, as an elective. And then we have a technological area. Uh, as the core course, uh, we decided to uh, offer you uh, the course on affective computing, which is basically is the basic of artificial intelligence for uh, with a perspective of interaction, of course. And then uh, uh, you can choose other two courses. One is multisensory interaction, and the other is non-verbal behavioral interaction, uh, which are very uh, which are more strong from a, a technical uh, also for the requirements of technical requirements but they will offer you some very interesting perspective toward the future of uh, technology. Then you have a, 
uh, three, uh, two, a couple of courses, uh, three, uh, uh, 12 credits. You have a, a couple of courses that you can choose uh, however you want. Uh, basically, uh, formally, it should be any course offered by the University of Trento. Uh, but uh, uh, you should try to use uh, wisely these courses. If you want to uh, deep your knowledge on brain computer interaction, uh, our department offers a number of courses on neuroscience uh, and, and related disciplines. If you want to uh, deepen your understanding of technology in general, you can take uh, all, any courses from the Department of Computer Science uh, and so on. And, and also other courses from psychology. And then uh, we decided to have a, a lot of time, basically an entire semester, a little bit more than an entire semester, for internship and thesis. Uh, there are two different experiences that can be combined, of course, but there are formally two different experiences. You have uh, uh, 18 credits, it's uh, 450 hours for uh, doing an internship in a, a research laboratory at the university or in a company, as many of our uh, students actually choose to, be, to, to go in a company. And uh, uh, 450 hours are more or less uh, probably four months, more or less. And uh, so you can have a very long and uh, intensive period. And then you have more or less the same amount of work for thesis. Uh, and thesis is, is an original um, piece of work that you have to do to demonstrate uh, to the world. Actually, it's a, a public document, uh, your understanding of the thesis. Uh, our teaching happens in two locations, the Department of Cognitive Sciences, which uh, uh, is in the town of Rovereto, and the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science, which is in the town of Povo. Uh, the two towns are very close, are 15 minutes apart by train, more or less, uh, depending on the train. Uh, but actually, we take care that the teaching schedule for the compulsory and also the elective courses are uh, are uh, considered, considered these traveling needs. And usually we have uh, a few days of the week uh, in Rovereto, a few days of the week in uh, uh, It's a little bit of discomfort, but you have the great, the, the, the huge advantage of having access to the laboratories and to infrastructure of both the department. And this is not something that should be underestimated uh, um, uh, because they are, uh, it, it's not so common to have the possibility of accessing to such, such different fields. Uh, and of course, we encourage uh, uh, students to go abroad. Uh, in the last uh, year or year and a half, uh, that's a bit difficult, uh, but hopefully things will be come back to normal in, in a few months. Uh, and we have uh, exchange agreements in particular with the University of Bois in France, very close to Paris, the, the Technical University of Eindhoven, uh, the University of Siegen in Germany, and also very recently we signed an agreement uh, with the University of Applied Sciences uh, in uh, Upper Austria. And uh, all of these offer uh, programs related to uh, human computer interaction, but uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Delorco will, uh, will explain later, the, the possibility of uh, going abroad are much wider. And also, Victor, I think, uh, something to say on this, uh, on internationalization. Uh, just to finish uh, the applications and the environment in the last uh, few years, uh, we are a very uh, young course. The, the, the course started in 2015, 2016. We admit uh, at maximum uh, 30 students per year. And as you see, we have a, a steady curve, a growing curve uh, of applications. Uh, and so last year, we almost doubled the, the position, we almost tripled the position actually. And, uh, and so the curve of, of admission was more or less similar. So since last year, we had the, uh, we, we topped our uh, seats, our available seats, but actually we, were, we want to continue to, to keep 30 positions because uh, we wanted to have a, a very active and a very uh, classes. And we want to have a, a, most of our courses are project-based. And so uh, it's very important uh, to have uh, a, a limited number of students. Uh, this is very early for you, but we also offer a, a PhD program in cognitive technologies, and uh, but we will talk about that in a uh, bit. Uh, 
so this is all for me. Uh, I will remind you the, the, of the website in which we have most resources, uh, most of the information, and also uh, our Facebook page is not a very uh, active uh, Facebook page, but there are uh, we always post some important uh, information and uh, also the most of our activities. Uh, Okay, so if there are some questions, uh, I I see that there are something in the in the chat. Uh, in the chat. Uh, will it be possible to have the recording of this meeting? Uh, yes, it will be uh, uh, advertised. I think in the uh, web pages, but also the, we will distribute it in Facebook. In Facebook. Yeah. The, the recording. Okay, if there are some specific questions, you can do it now. Otherwise, I will give the floor to Eleonora Mancini, Avanzolini, sorry, our uh, one of the two uh, graduated students. So, and question will be possible also. Uh, you want to uh, yeah if there aren't uh, questions i i'm gonna share my screen uh, i think you can start and, uh, yeah absolutely can you all hear me yes i okay. think i can hear you okay perfect Okay, so can you see my screen? Okay, so perfect. Uh, I'm just gonna introduce myself and actually like uh, I try to put uh, into these two or four slides, uh, uh, just a few slides, uh, my experience with the master and how uh, it kind of like uh, went uh, from the beginning of the master to where I am right now. So it's less focused maybe on like my work and more about the experience because I thought that it could be more useful for where you are guys right now because uh, you have to decide and take this step. So basically like my name is Eleonora and uh, I just graduated <laughs> last month uh, from this master, from this uh, program. And uh, right now, currently I'm doing, uh, I've joined the Amsterdam based uh, design team uh, uh, for Uber. And uh, I'm doing uh, an internship for UX research. So basically user experience uh, research. And um, this is my second internship, always in UX research. And as I said, I'm not super very like, maybe as Victor uh, as advanced in my career, but uh, my experience may be quite similar to what you will have. Uh, so I'm always available for like questions and stuff. I will also leave my contacts after. And uh, I wanted to touch like uh, based on uh, my background because my background is in psychology, is not in design and not in computer science. And uh, I remember when I was in your place, I tried to get in touch with people from that uh, had already taken this course because I doubted quite a lot about my background. And what I wanted to say is that uh, in this field, there is no typical uh, background. So actually like fresh perspectives and different perspectives are very valued even in the workspace. So if you come from backgrounds that uh, uh, you feel are not the typical one or you don't feel like super sure you can apply, you can do great things, please don't feel like that because I was in that place and uh, it just like, it just gets better. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on this. And uh, again, as I said, also, when you start to work, uh, you will see that uh, in this in the field I've taken, which is UX, uh, different backgrounds and different perspectives are very valued. And uh, you will work with like uh, people with very different mindsets, maybe different cultural backgrounds, academic backgrounds. And this diversity is kind of represented during the course as well, because you will have like uh, uh, probably a very diversified uh, class and uh, you will meet uh, very different people and work with them and uh, it can be challenging but at the same time what i found is that it really prepares you for after 
because you're not always going to work with people uh, you know quite well. And um, also, uh, given the fact that I come from uh, this kind of background, uh, what I found that is very useful from the course is that uh, uh, all, the, all the courses are very foundational. And as you see, the, uh, as it was explained, you have like a, a broad spectrum of possibility. So you kind of have like a broad view of different uh, possibilities also for after. So it really kind of gives you uh, an insight also on what you can do after this master. Uh, which for me coming like, again, from a very um, humanistic background was great because I really needed to understand where I could apply and uh, what could be uh, most fitting for me. And um, yeah, so honestly, uh, this is, uh, was my experience. Uh, another great thing uh, about uh, uh, the program is uh, that it's very hands on because each course has like a final project and this kind of already gives you that insight you need for after and uh, yeah one of my advice would be take it uh, every project super seriously because you can start to build up your portfolio and that's something you will need uh, for after. And uh, another thing that I wanted to say that was me, that for me was great is the fact that uh, uh, it's not just uh, this master is uh, Unitrento in general, there is a great environment and really pushes uh, uh, you to grow. And uh, there are a bunch of different opportunities you can uh, grab and uh, honestly grab them all because they're super useful for you, for your growth and uh, to, really understand better what you want to do after and they even these they prepare you very well for uh, collaborating and starting uh, to enter uh, the work uh, the workspace so yeah as i said i wanted to leave you my contacts because i remember being in your place and i had a lot of questions and I didn't really know uh, who to ask them to. So I kind of stalk, uh, stalk a, a, a girl on Facebook and you can totally stalk people on social media, but if you want to avoid that, please feel free to write me because I'm always available for any, any chat or questions you may have on the course itself or even on UX research, super available. I don't know if this was very helpful, but I hope uh, it gives you an insight on how it's, the course itself is structured and how the way it's structured makes sense uh, to move forward with your career. That was what I wanted to focus on. Yeah. So I don't know if you have any question for me. I can maybe check on the chat. Uh, Yeah, I don't think so. So I'm gonna stop sharing and give the floor to Victor. Okay, I will invite Victor and I will uh, especially thanks Victor because uh, it is uh, almost late in the night now. So uh, it's, it's in Japan. <laughs> so thank you for uh, giving us some time. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me and thanks Eleonora for the presentation. Um, yeah, to be honest, um, after listening to Leonora, I feel that there's not much more to be shared, uh, but at the same time, it a bit fits with the presentation that I prepared because I maybe focused a bit more on the other side. So it's like, what happens after maybe? Um, I completely share um, everything that Leonora said so far. Um, I really believe that, uh, well, let me let me introduce a little bit who I am first and then I will connect a bit with Eleonora. So as I was introduced, I'm Victor. I'm originally from Barcelona um, and I'm currently living and working in Tokyo. I've been here since I, before I graduated uh, from the masters. I started my masters in 2016, if I'm not wrong. And by 2000, early 2018, I think I was in Japan. Um, I came because since a while I was interested in, in, in connecting design in Japan. And I thought it would be a good place to try to find an internship. 
So because this master's gives you, has this kind of flexibility and gives you these opportunities to explore and, and try things and talk to people and, and have this, as Eleonora was saying, like this um, kind of different profiles of people, different professors and, and different paths. Um, you know, I was in, encouraged to, to come here and try. So I got a couple internships on, when I came after a couple months. And I just was with a couple internships for a while, and one of them was more successful than the other. So I just stayed in this company until until now. Um, the company that I work at is like, uh, let's say, a small um, design research and innovation um, agency, completely independent. And that allows me to kind of touch on many different fields, many different practices, and many different industries. And that again, I can see that it's really um, well connected or somehow easy to approach coming from a master's that is so multidisciplinary as, as the one that we are here presenting. Um, having experienced uh, many different um, fields in these two sides, in the technological part and the human part, uh, made me have the, I guess, the skills to be able to touch um, this position in an easy way. Um, I guess a bit more about my work. The interesting part of working in a small kind of agency, not like one of these big um, um, four top consultancy companies in the world is that you do most of the work. Um, so you go from the setting the project, dealing with a big client or a small client or mid-sized client to delivering like a final design or a final product. And so that allowed me to, you know, explore a lot of things and talk to a lot of people and learn a lot so fast. And I guess that's partly because of the previous experience in the, in the masters, yeah. I don't know if uh, there is anything else that you want me to share. Um, that, that you see here on the slide or any question, anything that I might have missed. Okay, there, 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 there has been a question about the, the job positions. So what, what, yeah. which are the job positions of a UX citizen? So maybe you, Victor, said something, maybe you want to say a couple of words more and maybe Leonardo didn't want to add something. Yeah. Um, what, what do well, you do? So, yeah, as I said, I, I do mainly, uh, my title is experience designer, but I'm a person that uh, I don't like titles so much. Um, I think experience designer might mean something really different. Um, starting from the annoying recruiters that call you from time to time. Um, the concept is understood differently in every company. Uh, so some companies would hire you as an experience designer and be hoping for you to just do UI, but they just call it experience designer. Um, some other people will hire you as an experience designer and they will expect you to do uh, business. Um, so it just, it's a really broad range. And I believe that one thing that these masters teaches you and that I really followed is I guess the, the idea of like, not don't restrict yourself, like just do whatever you want. Um, you can touch any type of companies. I guess you can go to a startup, you can go to something like Leonora is in that was a startup at some point, and maybe some people consider it a startup. You can go to a big consulting company or you can go to a small kind of consulting company. And in all these range of possibilities, you have you know, many different options and many different keys to, to touch. So it, it all depends on your interests and also of course on, on your lack or your intentions where you're looking for a job. I don't know, Elonora, if you have any anything else from your experience to add here. Yeah, yeah, uh, I totally agree with you, especially like on the part where uh, labels are very difficult to put. Uh, I think there's a very open discussion in our field about uh, how to name uh, jobs position and, and stuff. So 
maybe we shouldn't focus too much on, on labels. But yeah, I totally agree. Um, there are a, a wide variety of different jobs you can take on after these. And honestly, uh, that's the point. Uh, I think I forgot to say it while I was presenting when I mentioned the fact that a lot of the courses are very foundational and then you need to build on that. And what I meant is that uh, uh, they're very like focused on giving you uh, a, a, a mindset and a methodology. And with that, you can really do anything. And moving from like being in academia, so maybe getting a PhD and continue to do research there, or maybe doing applied research, so product research as I'm doing for Uber, and uh, or maybe going more into design, as uh, Victor said, you can be like uh, UX designers or UI designers. So, uh, I, I guess that also depends on your interest and like uh, on, uh, on what uh, uh, comes easier for you. But honestly, that's the point. Uh, you kind of get a, um, a huge variety of uh, perspectives and then it's on you to build on those, right? And uh, decide uh, which direction to take. So yeah, yeah, that would be my answer. I don't know if uh, you want anything more specific on UXR, but maybe it's not the place, so. Okay, so thank you. If there are more specific questions from Eleonora and Victor, they will probably be here for a few minutes more. Uh, I would just to add on this uh, aspect of job uh, jobs and the future works. Uh, I perfectly agree with them. The, it's very difficult to, uh, to have labels in our field, UX design, because yes, there are different names, some are buzzwords, and uh, there are the different meanings uh, attached to the labels depending on the companies and the UX maturity is called the company. Uh, so this is the reason why we don't have courses. And, uh, I think it's a good idea on our side uh, not to have courses on specific technologies. So you, you will not have a course on uh, a mobile uh, application or virtual reality that uh, somebody asked in the, um, uh, in the chat. Uh, of course, if you want to, to deepen these and these things that are uh, you can do in different ways, but following attending uh, courses in the in this free with this free credit. Uh, but the point is that uh, uh, mobile is uh, almost done, more or less. Is a, a virtual reality will probably be something in the future, or maybe not. Artificial intelligence is a buzzword today. Maybe it will not be in a couple of years. Oh yes. Uh, wearables was a buzzword a few years ago. Today, nobody really talks a lot of, much about uh, wearables, but it seemed so promising uh, uh, five years ago. So things are changing, are changing so quickly that uh, whatever you learn at university will be uh, old and, and discarded uh, just in a couple of years. One methodology is not. So we encourage our students to take projects, uh, and during the project, you can the virtual reality, but uh, um, all uh, or video games. Like uh, I just glanced at the chat, but I will uh, try to reply, reply in a moment. Um, but uh, we don't have specific courses on this. Uh, we encourage our students to be open, to be discuss, and to, to take projects, of course. Uh, and during the project, we have to learn specific things. Um, but this, but our a decision to, to do this to the master in this way was exactly because uh, we want that people are ready and uh, learn foundational aspects before the technical part. Uh, okay, there are a number of other questions. I'm studying at Sigmund Freud University, which is actually based in international collaboration. I've already taken exam and classes in English. Uh, the biggest fear is not to be able with an entire program in English. How difficult and important is the uh, English language? Uh, basically, we, we all, I mean, all the teaching and the exam and the project are in English. Uh, nobody of us actually, uh, including me, are, have a perfect English, but, uh, uh, but we have to survive in an in a English-driven uh, world, let's say. Just to give you an idea, uh, to this year there are 11 students uh, from Italy, they are Italians, and the rest uh, are from out of Italy, some out of Europe, some in Europe. Uh, and so I think that English is important. 
uh, is not a master of English literature. So your English has not to be perfect, but it should be good enough to, to talk uh, and also to socialize with your fellow students because not all of them actually will speak Italian and not all of them will eventually speak Italian. Uh, is the master a good starting point uh, uh, for video game? Uh, yeah. The, the point is, uh, we already said, it, it can be or it cannot be. If you want to learn how to do video games, there are probably better courses than this. Uh, if you are in specifically interested, interested in studying video games, uh, probably not. But if you're interested in experience design, including video games, yes, we have, I can remember at least one uh, former student which is in the video game field in this moment. Why should a student who has done ITC take this course? Uh, to deepen his knowledge and his understanding uh, of the uh, methodological aspect, the theory, the and uh, to, to, do a, to to finalize his uh, uh, or her um, uh, understanding of the field. According to your experience, uh, professional figure like you is actually requested in the job board nowadays. Uh, Eleanor and Victor, this is for you, I guess. <laughs> I cannot give you the if I say that. Um, yes and no, I guess. Uh, it depends on what you do, but uh, um, as Massimo is somehow introducing, um, this field is growing and growing. Um, it's something that more and more companies are um, valuing. Um, I get a couple calls a week from companies trying to hire me from the company that I'm in. I'm in Japan, it's a different market than Italy or Europe, but it's something that is happening. I've spoken to people doing the same in, in Europe and that happens also, and there's more and more jobs. So I would say that it's not, if what you're looking for is job uh, fitability when you go out, this is a good, this is a good choice. Then if you're thinking about money, it's also a good choice. Just choose where you work. Maybe Italy or Spain, where I'm from, might not be the best place to work. Maybe you can go to the US that they pay a lot of money for this, but that's, that's up to you later. And also depends on the company, of course. Laura, do you want to add something on this? Yeah, no, I agree. It's definitely a growing field. And uh, I think that in comparison to many other fields uh, is actually like uh, not impacted by COVID and uh, it's growing and uh, there are a lot of job offerings. What I want to say is that uh, um, it's an, a piece of advice I would have given to myself if I knew beforehand uh, is that uh, um, it's a uh, there are definitely a lot of positions, but they're usually like uh, it's more difficult for junior to enter the market, right? So my piece of advice is uh, during the master, if you're of course applying and uh, uh, going in, um, try to get as much experience as you can because uh, building on that, uh, it's much, much easier uh, as soon as you graduate to find a job. So yeah, gain a lot of practical experience before because there are jobs, but they require quality work and experience. So yeah, work on that as well. Don't think that, uh, hey, I'm coming out of a master in HCI, I'm gonna get a job. Yeah, of course you're gonna get a job, but also work towards that, right? So yeah, but it's true. There are a lot of jobs, I agree. Uh, if I can add something, the, the point is that uh, uh, the UX field is a much more buzzword than uh, a, a stable field. So everybody wants uh, to be the next uh, Facebook or the next Google, uh, but they don't want to invest. And so this, this is the problem. It's a very unstructured job, uh, type of job. Uh, uh, so a lot of people are trying to sell themselves as a user experience because they come from design or from computer science. And so it's a very messy. Uh, environment in this moment. I think that things are going to be more stable in the future because uh, uh, that it, it's very important for when technology becomes more and more um, important in our life and in the last 
year in, year and a half, we, we saw how much important can be and so how much important the user experience is. Uh, but still, I think that the cows will, in the field will stay for, for now. Um, I think there are a few more questions. Uh, at least one of these uh, could be uh, actually um, responded by Dr. Bernardo, the plan for the COVID for the next semester because of COVID pandemic. Um, I will uh, uh, answer, uh, okay, maybe there are just a couple so I can answer and then I leave the word to Dr. Bernardo. Uh, the first one is I'm correct, currently studying computer science. Uh, I would like to ask if there are courses, projects requiring programming and coding. Uh, in this moment, uh, uh, there are no courses in which uh, programming and coding is uh, really import, import, important and fundamental, but actually uh, a little bit of programming and coding is important in our job, at least a little bit. And uh, there are a couple of uh, elective courses for the technology uh, path in which uh, you have to be able to program. Uh, usually I encourage people to learn a little bit of coding. And uh, from this year, we have a bridge course at the beginning, at the very beginning. So you will be, uh, if you are not coming from computer science, of course, you have a, you, you will be offered to learn a little bit. And uh, I think that, uh, yes, you can graduate without being able to code, but, uh, but probably it's better if you do. Uh, the other, uh, Bachelor in Marketing and already apply, uh, uh, what, uh, um, what are my changes of getting in? Uh, basically, I don't know. I have to just to see your curriculum and your motive and your letters. Sorry. <laughs> I, I want to be honest, but uh, um, I can give an honest answer, but without saying the, uh, without having seen the curriculum. I can't get in. Uh, just, just to say, we, we actually we, we, we encourage mostly students with a background in either psychology or computer science. But we are honestly open to other backgrounds uh, if we are motivated and if uh, it's clear uh, what they, why they are here. I think that uh, given the very um, uh, chaotic uh, world in which uh, UX, uh, that is UX, I think that uh, it's worth taking this, uh, um, this master course if you are really interested in uh, designing technology, the world of making a, a difference in designing digital technologies. Uh, so really, we, we, we try uh, first and foremost to understand if you are really up on this, uh, a real understanding and a real passion for this world. This is our main drive, driver when we look at your motivation letter. I think that I can give the floor to Dr. De Larco. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Can you see the slides? Yes, yes. We can see. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, I'm Michele Dell'Orco, head of educational student support service psychology cognitive science area. I just want to give you a very brief insight into the admission enrollment procedures and some hints uh, in uh, um, about the student services offered by University of Trento. Um, according to the call for application, you know, um, for the next uh, academic year, uh, 20, 21, 22, uh, entry is restricted to 30 uh, places. And after the first call, uh, 12 places uh, have already assigned. Therefore, uh, 18 places are still available only for uh, EU students and non-European applicants permanently resident, resident in Italy. Um, the deadline of application, application has to be submitted, completed, submitted by the end of uh, next May, May, and um, you have to complete the, the application and also to, to pay a very small uh, admission fee of 15 euros. 
and this is the um, website uh, in order to to enter the application and complete it um, i assume that you already thoroughly read uh, the call for application uh, anyway um, the admission uh, procedure set out two compulsory uh, requirements the first one is uh, uh, a bachelor's degree or higher degree awarded in italy or another equivalent uh, bachelor degree uh, acquired abroad. And the bachelor's degree has to be obtained by September, the end of uh, next September at the latest. Therefore, applicants admitted after this second call were expected to graduate after the end of May will be admitted under condition. The second, the second requirement, compulsory requirement, is the knowledge of uh, English language, at least uh, at a minimum level uh, B2. And uh, this can be attested by applicants uh, different ways. Um, submitting a certification of knowledge uh, issued by an assessment institution like Cambridge, IELTS, TOEFL, and so on. And uh, related uh, to the four skills, uh, that is uh, listening, reading, uh, writing, and, and speaking which have been um, correctly tested. Um, the certificate must be submitted by the end of August at the latest. Um, so as, as uh, the same for, for the bachelor degree, until the certificate um, submission, the mission of uh, uh, applicants is under condition. Um, other, other ways to... to um, demonstrate the, the, the knowledge of English is to submit a um, transcript or record attesting the completion of uh, a university exam of English language uh, at least level B2. Uh, in this case, remember that the level of the language is the B B2 or C1 level uh, must be clearly mentioned in the transcript or records or um, having a certification attesting the bachelor's or master's degree entirely held in English, or a self-certification attesting that the applicant speaks English as a mother tongue, or um, having a self-certification attesting the applicant is a citizen of uh, a country uh, which where English uh, is the official language. Okay, according to the call for application, um, the assessment of the application by the committee is based on three, uh, three following cr criteria. Um, evaluation of the academic background and the reference letters, letter for uh, maximum 50 points. Uh, the assessment of a statement of purpose uh, which has to be written in uh, English and uh, which the candidate supports uh, his uh, her application and um, his her motivation, and uh, a self presentation video pitch, uh, which is also uh, compulsory. And uh, this criteria, this item uh, is evaluated uh, maximum 20 points. And then finally, the relevance of previous studies and experience to the course uh, contents, uh, maximum 30 points. The final application score is given um, at maximum uh, 100 points and applicants uh, are considered eligible with a minimum score of 50 out of 100. After the admission, uh, um, uh, more or less, uh, the admission ranking will be published uh, on the website of uh, our master degree course uh, by the end of June at the latest. And the first 18 um, admitted applicants, we have to pay, we have to co confirm to um, the acceptance of the place and pay an enrollment uh, confirmation fee of 100 euros um, by seven days after the after the um, displaying of the ranking, final ranking. Um, if they don't uh, do that, they will be considered 
as having dropped out their place uh, at admission. And um, in this case, uh, should any admit applicant drop out the master admission, the following um, eligible candidates in the ranking will be immediately invited to confirm the place. Uh, so check out your email, uh, although you want uh, awarded with the eight, first 18 place uh, in, the, in the ranking. And um, the official enrollment procedure in the master course uh, is going to start uh, roughly at the end of July. So in the last uh, week of July, um, admitted applicants uh, have to complete uh, to start to complete the enrollment procedure. Um, upon arrival, after completed the official enrollment procedure, uh, starting from end of July, students are then supposed to physically arrive to Rovereto, uh, roughly in the first 10 days of September, since the classes uh, are starting uh, roughly 10 days after from uh, September 20th. And uh, we actually don't know right now uh, how could be held uh, classes uh, starting from next September. Uh, in all likelihood, uh, we all uh, hope that uh, classes could uh, be only face-to-face, -face, uh, that is in person, and uh, otherwise, uh, we will use the, the, the same way, the same mode of uh, the current uh, academic year, that is a blended mode. There's a part in person, part online, synchronous or asynchronous mode on our university online teaching activities platform model. Um, course attendance is not compulsory. Maybe we can, maybe yeah. we can add that uh, the decision how to, to deal with the, the COVID is not uh, from the course, but actually is the, I mean, we will do what the university. Of but course, it, it's an overall decision about, uh, yeah, um, yeah. From, from our, our rector, and our <laughs> heads, and uh, to all the, the departments, all the master courses. Um, you know, uh, things uh, change, uh, have been changing every now and then, every every month. So we actually don't know right now, uh, we'll see, but we really hope that we can, uh, yeah, uh, hold all the classes uh, in person, who knows. Uh, courses attendance is not compulsory, but it's very highly, warmly recommended. Uh, one Italian credit, uh, CFU, uh, corresponds uh, to 25 hours, uh, which is uh, 18 self-preparation and self-study, and se uh, seven hours uh, for uh, each class uh, in person or in online mode. And uh, human computer interaction master course courses are usually all of uh, six, six credits, that is uh, 42 hours. Uh, at the end, the student, uh, uh, in order to graduate, has uh, to acquire at least uh, uh, 120 credits, uh, which is divided among uh, compulsory courses, elective courses, free choice courses, and then credits related to internship and uh, the 18 credits for the thesis research. Tuition fees. Uh, uh, all the Italian and EU citizens and students uh, can find uh, um, the information about tuition fees uh, on this website, Info Studenti Unitn. Um, the amount of the tuition fees uh, can be partially or totally reduced according to economic situation of the student's family. It is this uh, ESE indicator, which has to be calculated uh, every year, uh, yeah, January through September, and allow students to uh, reduce uh, partially or totally um, uh, their, their tuition fees. Um, I want to mention this uh, um, tuition fee simulator. You can find this on the mentioned uh, webpage. And it's very useful because uh, entering your easy indicator for the year 2021, 
you can immediately get the amount of your uh, tuition fees uh, in a few seconds. Um, sorry, Opera Universitaria, speaking of accommodation scholarship, Opera Universitaria is the institution partner of the University of Trento, which is in charge of accommodation for students, uh, universities, canteens, restaurants, and cafeterias, uh, scholarship and tuition fees uh, reduction exemption for, uh, for uh, EU students. Um, every year, Opera Universitaria usually issue, issues um, the call for scholarship and accommodation roughly mid-June. So uh, be careful and check out uh, these, uh, um, yeah, these, uh, and serve on these, uh, um, website of Universitaria mid-June and uh, yeah, if you want to, to, to get uh, accommodation or a reduction of tuition fees or, or a scholarship and uh, anyway you have to have calculated before this uh, easy indicator uh, in order to, to apply for for this call for application by Opera, University, Opera Universitaria. Um, yeah, just a very, very quick glance at student services offered by University Trento. Um, yeah, I, I would like to, to mention uh, our online teaching service uh, that is uh, over this last year turned out to be really very, very important in order to guarantee the regular. Um, yeah, um, yeah, the classes uh, held in online, the online or blended mode uh, with recorded classes on, um, on this uh, university platform Moodle uh, or the synchronous mode classes uh, held uh, by professors on Zoom. Uh, we also have uh, had uh, the exams uh, at the end of each courses taken uh, online and also uh, thesis defense sessions uh, uh, taken online uh, uh, on, uh, on Zoom uh, program. Another very, very quick uh, glance at uh, the other student services. I want to mention the five amazing uh, libraries uh, of Trento, including the, the Cognitive Science Library in Rovereto, then the um, great possibility uh, yeah, not in a COVID pandemic situation, but in a normal situation to, to practice, uh, to have many sports uh, opportunities. I want to mention the Unitrento app, um, very useful, uh, uh, and uh, where, which, uh, through which you, you, can, uh, you can check out uh, your, uh, everything related to your uh, student's career, uh, classes timetable, uh, classrooms, uh, your booklet, uh, the exams, uh, uh, grades, uh, and so on, on your mobile phone. Then the uh, CLA, the University Language Center, where you can uh, um, attend uh, language courses, uh, English, German, French, Spanish, uh, Russian, Portuguese, and of course, uh, Italian language courses for foreign students. Then uh, uh, the transport car is a really unique opportunity Start by the University of Trento with uh, only um, 50 euros, uh, students uh, can uh, uh, use the train, uh, buses, uh, all the transports uh, inside uh, the region, the province of Trento borders for free. And in all likelihood, uh, the next academic year, it uh, will be uh, for free. So without this. Uh, uh, fee of 50 euros, but it's really a very, very amazing opportunity for the students. And then uh, we turn to canteens, restaurants, cafeterias, uh, provided by Opera Universitaria, and of course, uh, IT labs uh, and free Wi Fi in uh, every university, every windows of university. And um, finally, um, I would like to, to mention uh, the um, wide array of uh, opportunities that Unitrento offers uh, in order to uh, carry out a mobility abroad uh, during the two, hour, two years uh, um, attendance of the master course. Mm -hmm. Professor Zancanaro has already mentioned uh, um, 
the Erasmus Plus for Study program, uh, particularly for this master course, uh, the agreements with the universities of Eindhoven and Siegen, for instance, and the students can apply for this program and then spend a mobility per period uh, uh, abroad at one of our um, partner institutional universities in order to take exams, attend courses, uh, carry out internship, uh, or to do thesis research for just one semester or also for um, a full year, two semesters. And uh, there are different uh, scholarship amounts uh, according to the country or the destination. Um, another opportunity is uh, given by the bilateral agreements uh, program. It is uh, um, University of Trento and also the um, Department of Psychology and Cognitive Science have lots of agreements uh, signed with other non-European universities from North and South America to Asia and uh, to Australia and so on, where and students can apply for this uh, and then attend courses or carry out uh, an internship uh, duration of the, of the mobility from three months to one semester. And then two other very, very, very recent and very uh, unique opportunities for students, the mobility for traineeship and the mobility for thesis research abroad. And uh, um, very important to point out is uh, these uh, uh, programs have a monthly open call for application. So there is not just one call or two calls during the year, but every month students can apply for this according and having, having again, some, some very basic requirements. And they can spend from two to six months or three months in case, in case of thesis research abroad, also combining the two different um, programs, um, of course, supported by very high um, financial support uh, and uh, scholarship by Unitrend. So very huge, um, wide array of, of uh, different uh, golden opportunities for students to, to carry out different programs, mobility uh, abroad, combining different mobility throughout the, the two years of attendance. Um, lastly, if uh, you would like to, to reach out to us uh, in order to get uh, for information, or if uh, you have uh, uh, somehow whatever doubt, uh, you, can, uh, you can write to this uh, uh, email account. And of course, uh, I, I recommend that you surf very thoroughly uh, on the web pages of the master course uh, you want interaction this uh, uh, link so thank you uh, thank you the, the, there is a question about uh, uh, somebody says that I have a few neuroscience exam in English are these exam valid to certificate our English level uh, I don't think so I think that the uh, as English a yeah, I, I said that you, you, you can prove your uh, knowledge of English level, at least level B2, in different ways. Um, if you want to submit uh, um, transcript or records, uh, yeah, including an exam, uh, university exam of English, uh, the level must be clearly mentioned. So you cannot... Uh, submit a, a certification uh, transcript with an exam of English or English for psychology or English uh, scientific English uh, without mentioning the B2 or C1 or C2 level. And this is, a, a, it does not apply close to the people who come from uh, countries, from, uh, from countries in which uh, English is a language, but usually this is not the case. Uh, uh, depends. Uh, yeah, if if they attended an um, uh, English taught uh, um, bachelor degree, of course, uh, this is possible and this is accepted. Other ways, uh, other way, no. A specific certification. Yeah. Uh, there is another question. Uh, a student said that. Uh, the uh, our university has a, the, the, the degree session in October, uh, but our 
limit is September. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, the, the deadline, the strictly uh, deadline to, to, be meet, to meet is uh, end of September at the latest. So, so I, I, I recommend that, the, the, that Isabella can graduate in July and not in October. Not easy. Okay, I think we can wrap, if there are a few more questions. Okay, I will uh, uh, remind you about the, um, the email of uh, uh, the Secretary of Support. Uh, okay, there is another one. I would like to ask you the statement of purpose and video pick. What do you expect to read in the statement of purpose? Like the reason we would like to attend the master or see the course which is with a relevant experience. Um, okay, so the letter of purpose is the letter of motivation. Uh, for us, it's very important. Uh, and uh, uh, the video pitch actually is uh, an uh, something to accompany the, the letter of motivation. So it should be a uh, a brief uh, summary of your motivation. What we would like to see is, uh, of course, your previous, uh, uh, your experience in this field, if you have it, but these also are in the curriculum. Uh, in the letter of motivation, we would, we would like to understand why you are applying, you are decided to apply to this uh, uh, master. Uh, as, um, as I told you, for us, it's really important to select students that have the passion and the real, uh, uh, yes, they, they, they understand what they are going to do and, uh, and they really want to do this kind of job. Uh, it's a difficult job. Uh, I think that, uh, as also Donor and Victor said, uh, it could be a very interesting job. There can be a lot of possibilities, but, but most of all, it's a job that you have to invent day by day. Uh, and so this is not the typical uh, job of a uh, um, clerk based job. So uh, it's really important that you have the motivation to do this one. Otherwise, uh, it's a problem uh, for us, of course, because we are just 30 seats, but more, it's more a problem for you than for us. Uh, so really, this is what we want to see in the letter of motivation. Uh, somebody asked uh, ask about uh, how long should be the letter and the video. Uh, it's not, I mean, I don't think that we put any, uh, any limitation, it's correct. Uh, yeah, more or less, uh, usually the motivation letter statement purpose are one, two, two yeah, pages, no more. Two pages, yeah. yeah, there are no formal limits, but yes, of course, if you write a book, it will be difficult for us uh, to, to read it. Uh, and also for the pitch, I mean, it, it should be a couple of minutes, or five mm -hmm. minutes. If it is an hour, it's a bit difficult. Um, so if you need the information, I can put here the, uh, the email, account. email address for, for, and they will possibly also redirect it to other people. And uh, uh, there's another one where we can find the recording of the Zoom session uh, as soon as it is ready. Uh, I think that uh, it will be in the home page uh, of the course of the master and also on the on Facebook. We will uh, submit on Facebook. So to wrap up, remember the deadline of uh, the end of May in order to submit and complete the, the application. Yeah, and this is for people who are in, uh, in Europe. Or there are people not resident in Europe, but that has a permanent address here. Uh, for those of you that are somebody from the US in the, in the list, uh, for non-EU application, uh, you should apply to the first school uh, next year. Uh, this is again is a regulation of the university for the um, time required to get the visa.
So this second call is just for Italian and European uh, recaps. Okay, if there are no further questions, I would like to ask Eleanor and Victor for their time, they are working, so their time is valuable. And also this is free time for Victor, which should be uh, having a, a party night in Tokyo and being with us. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And also Eleanor, that is taking a few hours for job. Yeah. Okay. No worries, thank you. Uh, thank you also uh, to Davide, the, uh, host and also to the Dr. Larko, our uh, the head of the service. Okay, By the thank way, you very much. Um, sorry, please. I will copy here in the chat my the link to my LinkedIn because I yeah. forgot to mention that Leonora. So if everyone has any question regarding anything of the field or the masters, please contact me and I will be happy to answer. Yeah, me as well. I already said it, but always available. So thank you very much. Good. Okay, thank you again. Uh, thank you to all the participants and uh, good luck for your future careers, either with us or with other masters. <laughs>